Hey, this is Philip again at thebest3d.com back from vacation and going to explore a little bit. Um, what am I exploring here? Something like a lake, a structure. I want to turn this into a canyon. But let me go and backtrack a couple of things here. I'm going to store this image and we'll have a way to get back to that. But I wanted to explore also how I got to that point. Now this started um, with a look at Google Maps and um, kudos to Google Maps, one of my favorite apps. I drive my limos. Um, now I don't drive it. <laughs> I haven't driven it in Singapore or Malaysia, but uh, I am exploring the languages there. And uh, one thing I also noticed is that there is a fabulous lake here somewhere. All right, so it really it doesn't matter where you go. If you see lakes, they sometimes come in really great shape. Look at this, looks like a four, five, six leg, legged uh, dragon of some sort. I know, I have a vivid imagination. <laughs> uh, so what I did, I think I zoomed on this one here, um, upper device reservoir, and I took a screen capture. And the screen capture is, actually I can still run it here. So let me do print, I have a print screen. Uh, screen capture of about this part here and I, I love this application by the way this is Snagit um, I have it configured to cap capture the uh, image or, or video uh, but I'm using a different device a different software that's a Microsoft uh, um, free version of the uh, video capture and encoder um, I forget the name of it at the moment, but uh, um, you can uh, you can find it at Microsoft.com um, something slash ah God I only had one cup of coffee and the <laughs> coffee and still have a little bit of jet lag so I can't remember anyway so I'm gonna do a Control C to copy that from my screen capture and then go back over to um, good old Howler and Control V to paste it right in there all right Control V and uh, this time I'm going to replace the existing image. So there it is. All right. So the, the next thing to do is to identify uh, the lake, right? To isolate it from the rest. And uh, there's the magic wand. In this case, this I mean, there's many different ways to make selections. And in this case, the lake is all self-contained, doesn't breach out to others, other colors nearby the same. Well, there are some that are near, almost the same, but not really that close so I can set a tolerance here for the selection if I go to the magic wand tool and set my tolerance to about 30 let's let's try a lower value first uh, 20 uh, without anti-aliasing click inside you'll see that it, it grabs most of the lake but not quite everything there are some branches here that are perhaps a little bit darker or a little bit lighter uh, if you go with anti-aliasing enabled uh, it might go further and sometimes that's just the ticket. Sometimes it's just what you need. If you went with the default of zero tolerance, it would not actually find a whole lot of these pixels at the same value. So if you give it three or four, it goes out a little bit farther. And the higher that tolerance is, the more likely you will find most or all of the lake. It depends on where you click on the lake. Sometimes you do that with a shift to combine, but there might be some ranges that are kind of iffy to select. I would try without anti-aliasing first. It really depends on a case-by-case -case basis if the image is anti-aliased. You see here there is some aliasing or some, some soft uh, edges, so you probably will benefit from using the anti-aliasing. Because uh, if you do a shift click here, that's a nice complementary grabbing and adding to it, but the selection is not very good along the edge because it's just all or nothing. And with the anti-aliased, uh, shift click on that you'll get closer to that but you'll get some iffiness there so that's where you will want to also increase that tolerance a little bit more let's try 12 it's just a touch and go you know it's a little bit of experience a little bit of intuition let's try 22 oh, that looks pretty good at least in this area let's go and pan around and look at the other areas Ah, there's a few we missed so here is where we perhaps need to go even higher 22 Let's try 30. I think I had it at 30. There you go. All right. Now, there are some parts here that are not selected because of the text. That's okay. We can, we can blast that later. Or we could actually go with uh, right-clicking on the brush tool and selecting uh, paint on alpha there, uh, hard or soft. 
just paint on that and that will add to the selection. Uh, now it doesn't paint away the colors, it's just painting the selection on the alpha channel. Um, there are a few more items here and uh, this one here we might want to also paint or we might want to ignore, doesn't matter. For what we're going to do, uh, really if we, if we want everything selected, then what we'll just need to do is keep working um, at the um, tolerance right here and see if perhaps 36 or 40 ish uh, would be the right value to get it all. all right this one here is good I think that's good so we still have the reservoir oh no over here so yep uh, maybe that is still not quite enough right, it seems like there is some there are some colors here that are resisting selection but uh, with the shift key on that uh, you might be able to to get uh, very close and then you have perhaps just a few that you need to um, to cater to and, and to select additionally. I mean, that's something you can do right here. With the uh, paint on alpha, um, you go uh, make it a very small brush, right? Paint on alpha, maybe soft, and, and then make it a very small brush so you don't um, overly extend that selection. But just a few pixels allows you to select this area, these pixels here, add them to the selection. All right, something like that. All right, we're going to do a lot of havoc and mess on these uh, this region anyway. So, but for now we have a selection that's fairly decent and usable. Again, we need to also uh, blast away the selection around this text here, uh, or we could even just leave it because what I'm thinking of doing here. Let me show you. First thing we'll do is we'll store this selection. All right, we'll store um, there. Store selection. All right, so we have a a copy of that selection. This is the one I did earlier. Let's minimize that. Uh, so here's a copy of the selection, just sort of a snapshot in memory. And we see that there are some parts that are not selected here in the middle. We can actually go and paint right on that as well in this stored copy. All right, so if I go and select the paint mode and set my brush somewhat small, I can go and paint right over that. Paint that selection away or right, rather add it. White is selected, black is not selected. So now it's all there, and if I click uh, Replace right here, you'll see this selection turning, uh, showing its own color, meaning it's it's selected. Right. So now the text, the color is still there, uh, but the, uh, the the purple um, highlight that we got for the unselected part is now gone, and we have everything selected there. All right. So we have a, a decent selection. Um, and what I'd like to do really is turn this into sort of a canyon. So that means anything that's on the non-selected part is going to be high elevation. I'm going to get rid of all these uh, streets and uh, I know city names. And I realize I missed some of the lake here, but that's okay. It's just to show uh, a concept and a technique. Um, so what I want to do next is to um, to erase everything to black. Uh, that's on the inside and erase everything to white that's on the outside of that selection. Right, so uh, since currently I have the inside selected, let's erase that to black. Let's click the right click on this thing here and erase to black. And that's going to be the lowest elevation in my elevation map. Right? What I'm building up here is a terrain like a canyon elevation map. Uh, then I'm going to invert the selection. Now I still have my selection here somewhere. Um, this one here will work just fine, I think. Uh, no, that's the, the one I did earlier, or is it? <laughs> uh, that's the one here. You know what? I'm going to go and grab it again, just to be sure, because um, I don't remember if I stored it after clearing that text. So I have this now. I'm going to invert it and put it back in. So now I have the selection on the outside part. The inside is black. It's tinted to purple, but you can't really tell. Black times purple is still black. The outside, though, is showing its true color. So you can go now and assume that that's been selected. And we can go and right-click on the same Erase tool, but this time we'll select Erase to or clear the selected to white. All right, so everything is white now. All right, so we got a starting point. Next thing I'm going to do is clear the selection. We may not need that for a while, so I'm going to move that to the side. What I want to do now is crystallize it to add a little bit of noise around the corridors. Because if we go and render that, uh, first of all, let me store this image. Just a sort of a handy snapshot every once in a while. Uh, I'm going to go and select the 
um, the, the transform filter and go to either the 3D designer or puppy ray. Let's do puppy ray in this case. And I'm going to go with the GPU version, which is the faster one. And then at this time, I'm going to see that I have a 3D terrain that's carved out by the shape of that lake. Um, not surprisingly, that's exactly what that image does. Uh, it's being interpreted as an elevation map. And so black is the low elevation and white is the high elevation. Now I can adjust, uh, for instance, here, if I set it to this value here, I can adjust how much of that extrusion we get. Uh, we can also enable to see the darker areas a little bit better. We can enable uh, global illumination and it's using whatever the sky is up there. If I use the uh, rotation here, I can see a bluish sky. So it gives you a bluish tint on that global illumination. There are other preset skies and um, you can certainly uh, get something that's a bit more of a red sun. There's a sunset image on that, some reddish sky, plus the light source is out there somewhere. And that light, we can also move around and it will cast its shadows and do its illumination thing. Um, this is sort of a preview rendering quality. Um, you can do this at higher quality and final render and even final, final render. But we're not quite there yet. So one thing I want to do really is explore creating more realistic looking uh, features on these cliffs. Right? Eventually, uh, I might want to, to smooth it down a little bit. I might want to make it very crisp. So that's another thing. I might also want to stop the interpolation and then get a very blocky appearance. And that's one of my favorites. I'm sure you've seen me doing all sorts of um, renderings where it looks like uh, some building blocks of some sort, and they're very uh, uh, sharp-edged, uh, something like this here. Right. Uh, so uh, whichever way we go on the final render, it might be interpolated, it might not. It might have a little bit of pre-filtering for some smoothing, it might not. Uh, all of these things are going to come later. First, we need to add some more features. It might be erosion features and sediments, but even without that, let me go and uh, store this image because that's sort of an intermediate step that might be interesting to compare later. And then go back to the image. There it is with just the elevation map. Dark is low elevation, white is high elevation. Now I'm going to go and add some magic to that. So I'm going to go to render or rather transform crystallize. With the crystallize filter, uh, you're getting a very approximation of that and maybe even shade it. That's not the one we want though. We want to keep it white everywhere. Now you could actually do this and then uh, blur it and that would add a little bit of additional Right? If you do blurring, for instance, here, simple blur or Gaussian blur, that would add a little bit of additional uh, noise to even the higher elevation parts. That could be really interesting. Why don't we do that? Why don't we explore that a little bit? And then perhaps use the adjust uh, curves to, to say, well, if it's bright already, uh, let's make it even brighter, but just not as bright as it was before. Right? So we do still have a little bit of uh, variation of grays here, lights and uh, very light uh, grays. So that in itself is worth a trip back to Puppy Ray. Let's go to the Puppy Ray renderer this time. And we should see, yep, there it is. If we move the lysers around, uh, we, that might actually pronounce the vari variation on the elevation a little bit better. So that's already giving us something that's not too perfectly flat and looks a little bit more realistic. Let's go back and store this one as well. And uh, so we have two to compare, this one versus this one. Let's go uh, back to the elevation map. And oh, wait, we didn't store the elevation map after the bumpy stuff was added. So here it is. We need to store this one. Just to have a snapshot, we can easily get back to as well. Um, so now from this one, I'm going to use what I was initially suggesting, which is the crystallize. And the reason for the crystallize is to add uh, not the shaded version, but this one. Add kind of stepping stones, something that looks like some big boulder blocks, right? If you think about it, uh, these bright blotches will be all at the same brightness, same elevation therefore, but then there is a next level of gray and the next level of gray and another one and eventually dark on the bottom of the, the canyon. And so that will give you a very structured, uh, like terrace, like a terrace uh, appearance. Um, let's go verify that and uh, explore again the puppy ray preview here so now if we move the light now we have some sedimentation appearing here right we see something that looks let's go in a little bit closer 
it looks like uh, well this this might indeed be a canyon land of some sort let's make it a little bit lighter here and then also do a, a nice render on high quality so that's starting to look fairly decent let's get rid of the interpolation perhaps even better and the next thing i want to do is even have tiny little pillars now that's going to be done let's do a, a nice good quality final render and be done with that so here we have this one also to store away store image i hope you're getting that workflow thing this is really a good way to to keep what you have it's still in memory though it's not saved on the hard drive so be be aware that if, if you had a power outage battery dies or programs has a bug and uh, you, you might lose some data here it's really something you need to do on a regular basis and save often now i'm actually using version 9 beta version 10 beta here and there is a an auto save or some capabilities that allows you to recover uh, but in version 9.6 uh, that's not quite there yet or in any earlier version um, so uh, let's be careful here and uh, go back to the elevation map here let's store this one also all right and i'm going to minimize this selection minimize this all right so we have the next thing we we want to do is to add some more fine features uh, pillars so to speak right so to have some of these bright parts break off even away where it's already dark and that's easily done with the dittering or with the noise filters for jitter the jitter like jitter plus or just jitter um, will give you a, a very noisy appearance but that's exactly what we're looking for now you might not want to do that everywhere so just put a selection in that prevents it from happening outside of the scope of your interest but i'm going to be fine here with something like this uh, because what's happening is that uh, inside the bright areas it's mostly going to stay on the bright but then there are some of these uh, jumping uh, changes um, of brightness just the same as we have here along the cliffs along these very steep drops high gradients meaning a steep drop and so now at this point our rendering will look a little bit more like uh, a canyon with some bryce canyon style pillars uh, not in all ways yet but certainly getting much closer so if i'm going to go once more first of all store this image let's not forget that that's our current stored image um, let's go and filter that to uh, the puppy ray again and that one oh it's still set for for high rendering uh let's go to uh, medium quality well, maybe a little bit better high quality interpolation and uh i hope you can you can see how that's now progressed quite a bit let me go to the light source and move the light source around a little bit so we get a bit more lighting from the side oh that's way too bright let's move it farther away a little bit something like this right so then that way we have some nice lighting maybe we want to make it a little bit brighter now but we have it at a nice angle that accentuates these uh, ridges now these are good starting points for a number of things first of all we could do our final rendering with that um, but i'm going to go and abstain and instead add a bit of sediment deposits now uh, there's a couple of cheating ways to do that very efficient though uh, the soft contrast improvement will get the darkness up into the area and the brightness kind of saturating not my favorite but definitely worth exploring as well for some effects uh, the one i'm focusing on here though is the light diffusion also in the photographic filter category and with the light diffusion anything that's light will diffuse into the darker areas so when you are looking at all these high elevation bright parts they seem to be bleeding over to the darker areas and you can do this in a precise way it takes another second or so and you get a really nice uh, um, sort of sediment deposits. I would do a curve that's uh, very flat and goes out wide. Do that. And then I'm doing the same thing again uh, right here, light diffusion. But this time change the curve to a narrow and uh, perhaps the radius a little bit smaller too. So that one's going to be closer tied to the high uh, intensity ones. And it's not going to be spreading out that wide. But uh, whichever way you do this and maybe add a couple of other things, maybe a little bit of blur here. Why don't we do this also blur, even just a simple blur and go to the max or somewhere there. And then if it's too much, you can also use the interactive undo and just find a middle ground in between. 
Right, so there's lots of different little fine details you can add to that. And at this point, it's time to do another rendering. And that rendering will be, again, in Puppy Ray. So where is it? Filter, Transform, Puppy Ray, GPU version, because there is only so little time. And so now we are starting to see some, some softening on that. Um, let's see, if we don't do the extra pre-filter softening on the uh, renderer side, or maybe just a little bit, uh, we can see some nice sediment deposit appearing there. There's a little bit of soft, hilly look to that, right? Um, let me see if I can go to perhaps medium quality there. You'll see a little bit of uh, softening of the angle here, right? Um, let's see if I can even go closer to that. Oh, I need to go. Ooh, that's a nice part. Let's visit this side here. There you go. And, and then render that with a slightly higher quality. Um, so here we have, even without any further uh, interpolation, you have very crisp. Each pixel, each element of the height map is its own little square, but with interpolation, still great. And um, that's basically what I wanted to kind of achieve: is a mix of steep cliffs, a couple of ridges that peak out, some pillars. Uh, sort of an abyss appearance, and then at the bottom a sedimentation or some sand dunes look that uh, if we do a full rendering here, final render, uh, it's just going to be really beautiful. And it's still not done because uh, these blocks here, or these ridges that are fully static, I know we can do better even than that. We can, uh, um, we can, we can add some sedimentation look to that, right? So that would be part of not so much the elevation or height map, but rather the coloration based on the slope or based on the uh, elevation. All right, so let's let's do that as well. Let's go uh, store image one more time, and and then this time we'll go back to the elevation map. There we go. Let's make sure we. Ha I think we have that one stored already, but just to be sure. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is work on the coloration based on in such a way that we have sort of a sedimentation or stratification appearing. Uh, along these cliffs. Now, I don't want that to appear too much on the sediment parts in the lower valleys, the dark, or on the bright parts. I want that particularly on the cliffs we see sideways, right, along the parts which is going really from light to dark, any gray value in between. So I need to select that. And again, uh, there are many different ways to make selections. We could use that same magic wand and uh, hope for the best by selecting somewhere the middle gray here. And we'll see that sometimes we'll be really lucky and we have a band selected uh, where the, the dark parts are not selected, the light parts are not. But if you click a little bit off, you might be too far. If you click a little bit too low, you get too much of that. And that's actually a good way to do it, right? If you have a decent tolerance and some anti-aliasing or even without that, you get to select maybe two times. Shift click to select two regions and you have all that area you want. Now, sometimes that's not enough and you get some islands that are disconnected and not seen. So sometimes you need to work not from the magic wand, but from the select by option from the selection menu. Select by color, right? There you have, uh, it doesn't matter if they're all connected or, or islands, uh, but you can set the tolerance and you can set the color. It's just picking the bright parts or the dark parts or anything in between, right? So you see how it's going up the cliffs here. Uh, so here you're on the bright part, here you're on the dark part, and here you're somewhere in between. So pick somewhere, some sort of a middle ground, and then increase the tolerance to see that band go a little bit wider. Now, that may not be, RGB difference might not be good. Hue saturation value might be a better approach for that. There you go. Hue saturation. In fact, specifically just to set the, the hue, set the value, right? That's the one where you want to say, well, if the, the value is too different, don't pick it. If it's too bright, don't pick it. If it's too dark, don't pick it. But if it's close enough to the area that you select, to the value that you select, then that's most definitely one we want to pick. And you could go with the nonlinear to see if that's even better. Uh, there you go. Now, so that's one or two, uh, several techniques to make your selection along this gray zone along the cliffs. And that's sometimes not quite enough yet. So you could still combine that going back with the magic wand as well and select here. Right, select here, 
And, and then another thing you could do also is say, well, I'm not going to be too picky to have it exactly break off here. Maybe we do a little bit more uh, smoothing or softening of the selection itself, not of the gray values that it's, it finds. But the selection is something we can see here, the store selection. Uh, so that's the selection right now. And what we could do is perhaps adjust that selection a little bit, right? Because if we look at it a little bit magnified, grab the corner here, you see that the darker parts are not selected. The, the, the sides on the, uh, the slope are selected. And then there are some parts that are partly selected, light, dark, gray here. Uh, maybe we need to adjust for that a little bit. So we don't select too much of that, but we do go a little bit, branch out a little bit more towards the, the upper area of the, the plateau here. So one way to do that is to go to the selection menu and adjust the selection. Right? So select, adjusting the selection means essentially exactly that. You can make it a bit brighter and it, it grows the selection. Make it a little bit, uh, you know, adjust the, the brightness uh, so you have a more of a harsh transition. Contrast adjust, um, gamma adjust, all these things here can help you find a good, nice selection. And then even blur the selection with uh, the box filter or the Gaussian blur selection. Right? So that will make sure that you don't get too much of a crisp, sudden uh, transition between selected and not selected. Uh, make it precise. There you go. All right, so we now have a selection of just the cliffs that we want. And what I wanted to do is show you how you can make that a particular color that is a stratification, a transition, basically a gradient of different colors, reddish tints, reddish colors, different sand colors, rock colors, and that sort of things. So with that selection going from dark to bright, but not all the way to the brightest and not all the way starting from the bottom, just in this range, um, what we can do is use this filter called color map to current gradient. So we first need to select a gradient. Uh, a couple of ways to do that. I'd like to go here and use uh, the sweep editor. And there are some gradients we can start from, like this one here. Or we can select from many others that are preloadable. There are a lot of gradients from the picture frame side. Uh, gun, gun medals as well. Uh, antiques usually are really interesting because they have some bluish and greenish and reddish and earth color tints. Uh, the thing to do then is to work on the value. So select uh, the value here and go up and down a little bit a couple of times. Something like this. And then look at the red channel, the green channel, and the blue. And if you find there is too much green or too much blue, reduce it a little bit, right? Something like this. Or if you find there's not enough red, you can add up a little bit more red. Now that's going to make it brighter too, so sometimes you need to adjust the value here and keep it a little bit darker. Really, depending on how you want that coloration to appear, uh, perhaps a bit more sandy look, some reds and greens together into the brownish tints. Um, and so with that, you have a gradient that might be perfect or maybe not. Let's see if we can find another one that might be a little bit better suited for this. I'm going to go back to loading the default gradient. And there is one here. Yeah, this one here usually is a fairly decent starting point. There's a few others, but I'm going to go with this one. Oh, this one is pretty nice um, because it also kind of gives a gradient in brightness. But I'm going to go and add a little bit to that and add some variation. See that? Okay. So we have a nice gradient. Not, no, not all of it is going to be used. The lower left is going to map to the darkest black. The l brighter upper right side is going to map to the light, the whitest light. And we only selected a portion of it. So only a portion of that gradient will actually be mapped onto this grayscale here, this range. So, but let's do that. Let's go to uh, color map to current gradient, and here they are. Now, this is a very perfect layout of the stratification, and in reality, we might need a little bit of deformation or a little bit of displacement. So one thing I'm going to go, first of all, I'm going to copy uh, that entire, store that entire thing here, and then switch over to the swap channel swap image and put that in there right and then go back to the main image now right now they both look the same but if i put back this image with just the gray values i am uh back in business here just with the height the elevation map so i have the color map in the swap image and i have the elevation map over here now for the higher elevation parts i might want different colors than what is it whitish or something like that 
So if I if I go and do a selection by the light parts, uh, I might say, what well, for these light parts, I might want to add yet another type of coloration, maybe some green, maybe some some plants or something, or some textures, right? You could go um, or, or rocky parts uh, patterns. Here, there's a a really good one under the view um, fill settings. Right, I'm going to use the pattern fill, and particularly the pattern fill that looks very dry, rocky, like something like this here. You can do a preview here, something like that. Now, maybe I need it a little bit smaller. So since that's loaded into the brush, the custom brush, I can go right here and uh, resample it to a little bit smaller. And uh, when I'm done with that, I can see it here. So here's a little bit smaller. It's seamless still. It's pretty good. And all I want to do is really put that into the color coloration of these selected high planes. Uh, and that's really easy. I can simply go to image fill uh, Q, right? Fill tool here. Now that might be too dark. And that's perhaps because, oh, right now I'm actually black here. I'm still, the fill mode is still plain color. Let me undo that. I need to go, even though I selected the, the texture, that didn't actually make the fill pattern or the fill the style, the fill mode, use the pattern. So I need to make sure I say pattern fill is my preferred mode here. And then the other thing I might want to play with also is uh, maybe not lose the current coloration altogether, not replace it. Uh, that's the default. But instead, sort of multiply or use screen mode. Let's do multiply. And I'm going to hit Q. And that will map or fill the uh, pattern right in there. And so here now, I might want to reduce a little bit to say interactive undo and say only a little bit of that is needed. I right? don't need all that. Uh, and then also make it smaller and do that again, but at a smaller scale. So let's go uh, make the brush even smaller and and do another queue. This time, perhaps in a different mode. So instead of multiply mode, I might try screen mode and queue that. And then um, uh, again, interactive undo. To say that was nice, but too much of it. So here you can go, just adjust it a little bit. So we have the coloration on that. We have the coloration on our um, sediment or stratification. We might still want some at the bottom. And this one, I'm always hesitating. Do I want some green? Do I want some lush, uh, you know, grass fields? Or do I want something more like uh, something like this here? All right. And I think this time I'm going to go rocky, uh, dry. So I'm going to keep that one. And for that, I need to select the dark areas. So I'm going to go selection, uh, this time by darks, perhaps, shadows. That will take care of it. it. It has a little bit also selected on those dark colorations here, though. So perhaps the magic wand would be better, because the stratification has some dark parts, too. So here, perhaps a little bit more tolerance to bring it up closer. There you go. And so now I can go um, with uh, this fill. And the style is going to go. Uh, multiply and um, gonna go with Q for fill then uh, I'm gonna do another style a screen Q that will break it bring it up too bright though so I need to adjust that with the interactive undo All right, it's a very quick way to to do that and then in the end maybe that's too much detail I wanted I liked that sand dune look that I had a little bit earlier but I mean that's really where you need to decide which way do you want that this paper textures, there's rocks, there's lots of different dry mud, uh, lots of different ways to get a totally different landscape. And then also one thing to remember is that this is just a color map. You also need a little bit of tones that cast shadows, height maps, right? Changes, variations. So this, this setting you have now here, you will want to transfer some of that also into the elevation map. Right now I'm looking at just the the color map here. Anyway, so we've got some ideas here on how to do this. Let's go back to the selection of just the um, the middle band here, and I hope I still have it. Yep, there it is. All right, so I'm going to go and replace this selection mask. One thing I want, one more thing I want to do here is kind of distort this a little bit. Looked like there were some earthquakes. It looked like there were some shifting of tectonic plates or something that just will take it away from being too perfect looking. Because if I don't let me clear this and do a quick render so you get an idea of what it's going to look like if I use it as this. I'm going to go to uh, Transform, Puppy Ray. Okay, so now we see that it is using uh, some coloration and some other effects there. 
Um, but oh, and wait, that's not that. I was doing this from the color map. That's not good. This is uh, the color map. I need to switch to the height map. So switch to this. There you go. All right. The color map is in the swap image, and the height map is in the main image. That's what it's going to use at the puppy ray level to create the terrain uh, elevation. But this one here is going to be used for the texturing, for the coloring. So that's what I want to see right now. Let's go to transform puppy ray. And so here we go. And uh, oh, this was final render. Let's go a little bit more like a medium preview. There you go. So now you see how we have really a great stratification of the colors along the, the clips right here, right? Or here. That's, that's exactly what I was wanting to do. Plus, we also have uh, additional details showing here. But that doesn't look like sand dunes anymore. That's just a little bit too dry. But then again, maybe that's the planet we are exploring. So that's perfect. And then we also have the high plateau with a little bit of coloration and some of the details we gave there. And so soon enough, you have a, a, a very vast canyon lens. It is not seamless yet, though. So you see a little bit of a, uh, a break here as the tiles are being connected. Uh, but that, that can be addressed uh, to a large extent with the uh, Make Seamless feature. Uh, so right now, let's focus on one more thing, which is the stratification layers. Uh, we want them to look a little bit more disrupted or a little bit more, let's say, less uh, perfect, a little bit more natural. Mother Nature is not perfect. Uh, so there are going to be perhaps a, a few things we can add to that to make it look even more interesting looking. And I can't believe I just said that, make it look interesting looking. <laughs> anyway, so let's go one last thing, and that's to uh, back to that elevation map. So I'm going to use a displacement now. Uh, that's a trick that we use to make this not so perfect looking, right? We're going to displace it by this image. Why not? That's that's a perfect way to do it. We can also just uh, replace the alpha so the displacement is only happening in the selected parts. Let's zoom in on that and see what I mean here. It's going to basically distort these perfect lines of gradients. And uh, one thing you could do is, first of all, uh, blur them a little bit. Uh, just a simple blur gives a little bit less of that blocky appearance, a little bit more of the natural um, blend and mix. But most importantly, we're going to do the displace. So from the filter, you can do displace by swap. right? And there are a couple to explore. The, the, the first one here might be OK for some, but not perfect in my mind. Let's go to, um, let's see, where is it? Uh, Oh, then here, displace by, I like the pool or the color twirl. The pool is immediate. Uh, that one's fast. And it, it really has some great looks, great features. Um, so play with that a little bit. And in either way, regardless of which one you use, you will want to also do the following. So I'll click OK and then do the interactive undo again. With the interactive undo, you can go back to before and after and then choose anything in between. Sometimes that's really where you get the best results. It's not none of it, not all of it, but kind of a, a blend of the two, like 50-50. Um, and so that's that's the one with the, um, what was that, uh, displays, pool displays. Instead, I'm going to also add now the color twirl. And that one, you need to click and let go before it takes, I don't know, it takes a little bit longer. Maybe we could optimize that in the future. But uh, it's an interesting one also in terms of what it looks like. When you see these twirls, there's some phenomenal uh, marble textures and other type of shapes coming out of that. So I'm going to use this and, again, use the interactive undo to have some of it but not all. And with that, I'm going to go clear the selection. And now we have a texture that looks much more natural, interesting, varied, whatever you want to call it. And then there is one more thing we could do now, of course, is this uh, dry bed at the bottom is just a little bit too blocky looking. We should blur that. We should go to the selection, um, to this one here, select the darks, right? Select the dark areas, the shadows, and then blur the image in there, right? Through that selection. So go back to the color image and blur that a little bit. Um, or even give it a different tint if we want to make it look a bit more like sandy looking. Um, so we could do like, uh, adjust the hue saturation value, give it a slightly different appearance on that. A bit green maybe, right? if we have some 
some vegetation showing there, a bit lighter. Uh, then there's also uh, the blurring we talked about. Let's do a little bit of simple blur. There you go. And, uh, you know, you, you can see how there's a lot of other things you can do to that, such as transform or render a uh, bumpy toy um, that will add a little bit um, additional features, especially the spiky purlin with uh, a bit of a self displays and a little bit less, in, a little bit smaller on the scale. Something like this. I might look at, make it look like sand dunes a bit there, right? So I'm going to go and maybe swap equal lighting. Nope. Uh, maybe add a gradient to that. Oh my goodness, there's so much more to explore here. Uh, I'm going to leave it like this. And then, of course, that's too much of it. I want to blend between the two. So once again, use the interactive undo. And uh, find the middle ground here somewhere. All right. So now that's the coloration map. And as I indicated, we might also want uh, to apply a bit of that displacement on the height map so that we don't feel it's just painted there on a flat surface but it actually kind of follows also and generates some cast shadows maybe we want that on only the selected bottom area here so if that's the case we can certainly uh, do something like that on just this uh, the way to transfer that to the height map is by doing a combine right you can do you can look at the height map and then combine with the swap. Um, so you can go to the filter and combine. There it is, not composite. Combine with swap. And there's a couple of ways to combine. You could do the multiply. You could do the screen. And that might be too much. But then again, here is the interactive undo to the rescue. So it only does like 5%, just a little bit. You might not see it. Depending on your gamma setting and brightness on your monitor, you might just not really see that. But you know it's there. Uh, another one that's also good is uh, the mix buffer, where you get to do one or the other and show a little bit of a transition. So I would do just about 5 or so, 10%, not more than that. Now that's a scale from 0 to 255, an 8-bit value of 256 possible values. But this itself is going to add a little bit of displacement in elevation as well. I would do that actually not just on the valley, but I would do that on everything, including the flanks and also the, the higher plateau area. Anyway, so I'm going to use um, that to um, finish the, the actual buildup of the terrain. And we have an elevation map. This is a good time to save it. Uh, I'm going to go just copy it to the clipboard, copy the clipboard, because uh, at least we have it there now. In case the program dies, I can always recover it from there. Safer though, also, if you save it to file and if you save. Um, if you save the the color map as well, don't forget you have this map and you have this map. All right, so this is the uh, height map. Let's uh, store that from, uh, for now, just store the image and then also take a look at that. Now, actually, before I store that, what I want to do is make it seamless. All right, why? Because I want to tile that in Puppy Ray and Puppy Ray will take this image and endlessly tile it until it disappears in the fog. So I'm going to go and make this image uh, seamless. Um, and we can we can play with this for a long time. I, I probably I'm going to run out of time. So I mean, if you make it overlap to the point here, you could have an endless canyon. Right? That would be an interesting thing to try. So why not? Let's do that like this. And then here we just use the default, use the image, keep the original size, go. Okay. So that one we can store. And then we go back to the main, the elevation map, and apply the same with regard to the uh, make seamless, right? Same parameters. So you need to make, remember what the parameters were. Make seamless. Make sure you set the same value here. And what was it? Eight on that one. I hope I didn't touch it because I didn't pay attention to it. Let's just use that. Now we have a seamless texture on the elevation map as well. Store that, and we now have the two matching. Hopefully. Um, we can actually combine them to see them at the same time. That's the layer mixing where we have the main and the swap image seen at the same time. Uh, right click if you want to see a different layer uh, blending mode, screen mode, for instance. Um, but so that's that's going to be a good starting point. Now I think we have a really interesting landscape to render. Um, let's go and render that. Transform, puppy ray, there. And so here we have, let's go play through that. Here we have a landscape that looks a bit more interesting because it has colors, it has shadows, it casts from slight bumps. 
Uh, you can make it uh, even higher cliffs or lower features. Um, you can uh, change the brightness of the light. Uh, you can look around in different directions. Um, this is where it's starting to just really come together and make sense, right? So here we go, uh, taking a look at the vast canyon lands. And again, the, the shadow that you have, I mean, the, the fog level here will control how far you actually see. Right? It keeps tiling. Be careful not to go too far. It might uh, tax your, your graphic system a little bit too much if it takes too long to render. But you can definitely go into three or fours, uh, even with, um, with high or final, final render. Uh, and and um, that's where you need to experiment. That really depends on the speed of your graphic system and whether it can take it without timeout. Uh, Windows has sort of a timeout. If the graphics doesn't respond within two seconds or so, it thinks it's dead. And it resets it. Uh, so unfortunately, that's just a, a limitation we have to work with. Um, save often, right? That's <laughs> it's always good to do that. So here I'm going to do my favorite look, which is a little bit more chaotic, uh, a little bit more on the brightness there, and then also uh, get rid of the interpolation and um, and make sure the pre-filter is zero. Maybe not even have any shadows, but that looks a little bit flat. It's it's actually nice to see those shadows. So I'm gonna go medium quality at first and um, with the shadows and then uh, look around and see and maybe i don't want just this static look into the abyss right this is an interesting view right there let's go and render that high quality um, but maybe we want to actually fly across that let's see with interpolation and uh, do a high quality render there you go so um, maybe we want to fly through that. And that's really what we do with the keyframes we see here. But first, we need a placeholder for this whole thing. So I'm going to go undo that, undo this rendering. And now I'm going to create an animation of all this. Right? So I have create. Um, maybe I'm going to need just 200. Let's do a short one here, 123 uh, frames, about four seconds long for the animation if it plays at 30 frames per second. And then. I can go and render again. Let's make sure the coloration is still there. Let's go to the swap. Yep, it still has that. Uh, and I'm going to store the animation that I currently have, which is not really very interesting looking, but it's a good one that I can get back to if I need to restore it. Um, that's the DWA, Dog Waffle Animation Format. And that one is stored on, on disk. Um, and now, so at this point, I can go to Filter, Transform, Puppy Ray, and I would still go with the GPU version. And uh, let's say we just want to do a panoramic sweep of all this. So I'm going to go to quick medium preview, uh, position our camera. I don't know, there's so many things, so many vistas to render. It's hard to pick which one is going to look the best. Um, do I want to look this way? Oh, yeah, down this valley might look really interesting. There's a lot of this is a long valley. Now, I might want to change my angle, not for a wide angle, but a little bit more of a tele lens and position myself here right on the edge of the abyss. Yeah, right here, something like that. Let's go up a little bit so I can see where I am. There you go. Okay, because when you do this, you can later also add some painted foliage, some trees and bushes and stuff like that. That's great for a static view. Can also be used in some animations. Um, we'll explore that perhaps in the future. Here is a look at my canyon. Let's go scale it. Let's bring the fog a little bit farther or not. All right, and then make the fog perhaps a little bit more reddish tint. Uh, so it looks like there is some sandstorm coming. And then uh, let's see for the coloration of the skies. We could actually use that last. Uh, you see now there is a fourth one here, and that's the texture we had uh, for the, the ground. And so we could go uh, with the bluish tint. We could go with something sunset looking uh, or this one here, even the night skies with the moon. Um, let's see if we turn the camera over a little bit. What are we missing? Oh, that's so beautiful. Look at that. Some great views here. Okay, so how about this one? 
I'm going to do a little flying down animation here. I need to make the light source go such that we have a really great lighting. And I mean that we see some of the features here. And I did not even do any erosion yet. This is this is one thing that we still have you know, left is to add some erosion and sediments uh, from the 3D designer side or from the stylize option. But we'll, we'll do that in another tutorial. This one has lasted long enough. Um, let's go and perhaps do a little bit of uh, pre-filter there. And so all I need to do is a little animation when I'm flying into that. So I'm going to keyframe this position and then I'm going to go here into it. So I'm going to go to the last frame and say uh, move in something like this and move down something like that All right do i want to go even further that looks great okay now this is just a preview i can always test that also uh that's perhaps not quite my perfect view yet i need to also change oh i know what i need to change my camera look i want to look up a little bit let's move a little bit to the left tad bit to the left here and then also change the camera angle the direction. There you go. That looks a bit more like, uh, what's that, the Monument Valley now or um, some canyons in California. Um, so with that, perhaps also reduce the uh, ambient light a little bit. What do you think? What would be better here, the bluish skies or perhaps the reddish skies? Ah, uh, that looks great too. All right, let's use that. Let's let's use this one here. Let's make it a little bit brighter on the, the sunlight. There you go, and keyframe that. All right, I think we are we're pretty much there. I mean, that's that's where we could go, you know, ad nauseum and continue. I'm going to do final render setting for this, and and then just uh, fly through that. So we know we have the first frame. We have the oh, let's see what happens when we go to the middle frame. See where we are, and see if we want to adjust that in any way. No, that looks good enough. Let's let's use that. All right, so I'm going to go and animate and just use the current settings. I mean, there are some extra options, so you could change that one more time if you changed your mind. Uh, Pre-filter level, there's some parameters that might have interpolated across the keyframes. Not here. I'm going to just render that. And now you see the animation going one frame at a time being rendered, collected into a beautiful four-second animation as we dive into this canyon. All right, well, that was a very lengthy, quick intro. <laughs> it's not really an intro. It's not the first time we do this. But if you haven't seen Puppy Ray yet, I hope this is going to be very insightful and inspiring for you to try similar vistas and uh, canyon lands. Um, one thing that uh, I want to add is that this uh, Puppy Ray feature, or this the, the Ray Tracer, is something we released initially in version 9.0. So that was the first time we did the release of uh, Puppy Ray, uh, Howler 9.0, and also PD Artist, uh, and then eventually up to 9.2. These were free updates, so you may be working with that at this point, or slightly higher edition version 9.5, 9.6, really, 9.6. I'm working here with slightly higher beyond that, which is version 10, but in terms of functionality, you might see only some minor differences. And uh, I certainly would encourage you to look at what's coming or what's new already in 9.6 if you don't have that version yet. Um, there's a lot of features that uh, relate to uh, erosion that we added in 9.5, erosion and sediments. And as you remember from this tutorial, we did not even use any of that. That would be another level of additional interesting looking visual realism that we can add um, if we want to have an automatic calculation of erosion creeks, erosion beds, erosion gullies, features due to erosion, uh, rain-based erosion type of thing, and then also sediments, because whatever that material is being eroded, it has to go somewhere, and the sediments is a, a way to simulate where it's going to land in the lower parts as it's being washed away from the higher elevation due to erosion. All right, so thanks for watching. Um, uh, be sure to bookmark us and come back and have fun and tell the world. All right, thanks for waffling and howling.